Hey guys, and welcome to another 410 tutorial. I'm Tom Howard here, and today we're going to be going over the very basics of non-destructive photo editing. Now, the principles behind this is that you should always be able to go back and edit an image. You should always be able to go back and change things, like if you adjust the contrast, the levels, you should always be able to go back and change anything you delete or anything you paint on. You should always be able to go back and make things better. Um, to accomplish this, we're going to use a number of tools in Photoshop to make sure that we preserve our original image and that we don't lose any of the data that that original image has. So let's start things off. Let's open up our standard photo here. Um, and you'll notice I use the same photo throughout every tutorial, and that's primarily just so that you guys get a sense that you can use the same photo too, or any photo you want really. I'm not here to walk you through and give you a tutorial. I'm here to give you the tools that you need to go out and do something really cool on your own. Um, and I really hope you guys are doing some cool things with what I show you. And I'd really like it if you guys could email me sometimes or send me an inbox with some of the images that you guys have made. Um, that's just me, though. So let's get going. Now, traditionally, if I wanted to erase something in this photo, I'd go out and grab my eraser tool and I just start hacking away at it and trying to get it perfect and going and using my undo key to take things back and try and go again and now that's just a pain and really inefficient on top of that um, what we're gonna do is we're going to make it look like we're racing and at the same time preserve all the photo data and be able to continuously go back and adjust and fix and really make it perfect so we're going to step back twice and we're going to create a layer mask um, it's that little button right down there and you'll see that gives you in your layer panel you now have an image a chain icon and a little white box now that is our mask essentially now to actually use it all you have to do is grab our brush change our foreground color to black and paint away now you'll see we are left with that translucent checker box in the background means that this image is now see-through this data like all of this is now technically or not technically but it looks like it's erased we can go and we can erase this a little bit and all that good stuff but the best part about layer masking is that now all I have to do is switch my foreground color back to the white that this box originally was and if I paint I bring back that data essentially I'm painting over it or getting rid of the paint I should say um, now that allows you to do some pretty cool things it allows you to instead of having to get in with a really fine eraser and erasing stuff like this it allows you to take the brush tool with this um, I'm going to turn the hardness up for this just to and that was by the way that was a right click to do that it allows us to do stuff like this and then bring it back in very gently and very caringly and you know it makes it a simpler process in the end it's great if you're doing like the corners of eyes on people and stuff like that it's um, a lot cleaner to do it this way. Alright, so now, what if we want to go back to our original image? Well, if you click, or right click, I should say, on your little mask, you get a bunch of options. You can disable it and take a look at what you started with. Um, once we enable that, you can delete it, which will get rid of it, unless you undo, permanently. You can apply it, which will erase the image which is kind of kind of pointless in my eyes. I mean, why would you waste all that time creating an awesome layer mask just to apply it to the image? But if you're happy with it and you know it's the final answer, I mean, I guess you can do it. We're going to undo that. Now, the rest of these we're not going to worry about too much. Um, we might later on, but for now we're just going to leave them. Those are the three you really need. So on to topic two. Now we're going to go over how to paint on an image without actually painting on an image. So let's delete this layer mask and we're back to here. 
So now, what if I wanted to paint something, a little message on the bottom of this image, let's say making a little card for someone. So I'll come in here, double click my color, change it to, let's go blue, nice little blue, and I want to write my image. Oh, that's really sloppy. I apologize for that. Um, now, everything behind this blue is gone, technically. If I try to erase the paint, I actually erase everything with it. If I try to do what I did with my layer masking and just switch the color and brush, it's just going to paint in white. To get back to my original image, now I have to actually step backwards, step backwards, step back again and again and again and again, etc., etc., um, until I'm back to here, and then I have to repaint everything, which can be really be a hassle if you got that whole thing painted and you wanted to change the H. To avoid that completely, we are actually going to create a new layer, we're going to rename that layer Painting, and we're going to paint solely on this layer. We're not going to paint anywhere else for now. So we can paint now, we can write our little message if we want, you know, whatever you want to do. And if we want to change that H, all we have to do is grab our eraser and change it however we want. I don't know why we would do this, but we can do it if we want. And of course, we can always go back and repaint it. Without ever losing the data behind, we can take this image completely off. We can move this image by itself, um, which isn't possible when you paint directly on the image itself. Oh, just throwing this out there. You guys know, or you guys can see I'm in CS6 now at this point. All of this stuff is still applicable in CS5. And earlier, actually, I, in one of my jobs, I work with Photoshop CS2. And I even do this stuff there. This stuff works on almost any Photoshop that I've worked with. So, anyways, continuing. So, here we have our painting. Non-destructively, freely editable for the rest of this composition's lifetime until we flatten everything at the end if we want. So, on to topic three now. The third thing I wanted to go over was creating an adjustment for an image. So, the traditional way of going about doing this is to select the image layer, go up to our image tab, adjustments, and clicking something in here. We're going to go with curves, I guess. Um, and changing stuff in here. Now, this works, and well, too, but it only works well once. And you can never go back and change it. So if I hit OK, there's no way to go back and grab those handles and adjust them a little bit and fix it or switch to the red channel and adjust it. And that's just not practical. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo that. Uh, Control Z again, just so you guys know. And we're going to actually create an adjustment layer. It'll be on its own layer and it'll be completely adjustable for the rest of the composition's life. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the little icon down here, that little half circle thing of a jig. We're going to click Curves. Now from here, we can do the same adjustments we did before. But there's one major difference. You'll see it's in a new look. No, I'm just kidding. It's not that. Now we can always go back and change it. So even if we say, go away, I'm done and we do a bunch of more things, we paint some more, maybe on this layer we paint a little bit more, and we say, you know what, I want to lighten up the background image a little more. All I have to do is double click, and mess around with it. And it really is that simple, I mean, it preserves all the data for you. It makes your job a lot easier to do it this way. Now I know some of you may be thinking, and I get this question a lot when I try to explain this, is, but how can you stop this layer from affecting everything beneath it? And just to show you what I mean, if I take this painting layer now and I drop it beneath, you can't really see it, but it's actually being affected now by this curves layer. So let's make an adjustment. Um, I don't know. Blue channel. Wow. Uh, it did not do what I wanted it to do. Um... Here. 
this will be a better explanation. We're going to delete the painting layer. We're going to place another image in, just to really throw this. And we're going to actually mask out half of this layer. Just to show you guys a little bit more clearly what I mean here. So we get this done, all brushed out. You know the deal. Now just to show you guys what I mean. So if we take this curves layer and we drop it in between these two, you'll see now only one of these images is affected. If we drop it below that image, none of them are affected. So you can clearly see here with this better example how the location of this layer affects the composition. Now some of you may be thinking, well that's inefficient, what if I want to layer things properly and create a cool composition with a lot of images and with a lot of adjustment layers? And the answer is very simple. Adobe has thought this one out for you. And it's called a clipping mask. Now let's say I just want it to affect my lamp image and leave this one alone. So instead of worrying about fussing with the layer mask and getting it to line up and locking these layers together or flattening them or whatever background method you might try all you have to do is right click and create a clipping mask now what that does is you'll see it creates this little arrow pointing down to this layer and it just says that this is only going to affect the layer beneath it and I just drag and dropped and broke the clipping mask but there we go back to it um, you can see now our second image isn't affected by it where if I release this it is now so I'm going to create that clipping mask and you can see now just this image the one this arrow is pointing to is the only thing affected how perfect now we can go in and we can make all the adjustments we want without worrying about affecting any of the images beneath this and just worrying about how this looks which is a very nice thing to have to worry about um, and we can go so far as to group these or do some cool things to get this out of your way but we're not gonna worry even worry about that now see so yeah, that pretty much sums it up those are the very basic principles of doing non-destructive editing on photoshop i hope you guys have fun with it and create some really cool things i'd love to see them thanks for tuning in stay tuned for the next video guys this is tom howard signing out